Hi, this is Alex for Shiny Shiny and Technologist, and here with Dr. Tanya Byron, who's running the Byron Review about gaming. And today was actually the launch of the Core for Evidence from Children. So you've already had the Core for Evidence from adults to a certain extent. Actually, that's something I wanted to ask about. On the website, there are already some sort of cynical people saying, haven't they already decided that things are harmful or inappropriate? How would you respond to them? Do you think they're misunderstanding the point of the, the whole review? I think, I think there are lots of arguments. I think this is a kind of issue that's argued about a lot and there's lots of sort of kind of big terrifying headlines in the press. Certainly I think the video games industry themselves sometimes feel that they're blamed and scapegoated for all the odds in society as probably does a number of the internet industries and I think that yes I suppose there's been lots of things that have been said but I don't think it's ever been said in a way that's joined up, that's thoughtful and that puts children at the heart of, of the thinking and this is what this is about. This is reviewing all the available evidence the research evidence, the academic evidence, the um, evidence from industry, the, the sort of market research evidence, there's a huge amount of evidence actually talking to parents and children already about these issues, but also getting personal experiences from, from parents, from people who work with kids and from kids and young people themselves and trying to put it together in a way that actually we can have a kind of coherent discussion about it rather than what seems to happen is that people can take very polarised views and then you get the problem where actually it's all about people arguing and disagreeing but actually very little gets done and meanwhile kids are still doing what they do. Exactly. Um, it's, I mean, it's quite a broad remit. I'm looking at the three sort of things that you want to do in the review. It's, it's sort of talking about whether it's harmful, also the rules for that kind of thing, and how you sort those up. Do you feel that's a very broad remit for one person to tackle in, in just six months? I mean, it's, it's a big step. Well, I mean, I've got a team. I've got a big team. I mean, this is, I mean, like any review, you know, I'm, I'm heading up. It's an independent review, so it's a review independent of government, although it has been commissioned by government. I'm supported by two secretaries of state, Ed Balls, who works for children's schools and families, and James Pennell, who's here today, yeah. who was here today, yeah. And, and Ed did the first call for evidence for me in, in October. So they're both really, really supportive of this review, as is the Prime Minister. I met him initially to talk about doing it. Um, and, you know, he's a parent of young children, and he, you know, obviously it's something that he thinks about as well. Um, it is a huge remit. I mean, I think this review is really about kind of scoping out where all the, where all the arguments are, you know, where the evidence is, where there isn't evidence, but is that sufficient for us to say, well, then let's not do anything. Sure. And certainly when it comes down to this kind of, is there evidence of harm? It's very hard to come by. It's hard to come by. Actually, to commission research that would enable you to, to, to see that probably wouldn't be ethical because you'd have to expose children from a very young age to materials that most of us instinctively would feel, yeah, potentially could be harmful, therefore ethically you couldn't really do it. But there's enough evidence for us to think about these things, there's enough evidence in the child development literature to look at things. Already as a society we have classification, we have age bounding for material in terms of You're saying of you think games. the classification system is very robust, so you don't have any... With that. I think I think where the classifications are put is fine, but I think the way possibly there are you know I think it's confusing to parents. There are two classification systems. I mean, you probably know this. I think a lot of parents do. Really, I think first of all, probably confused by the classification system. The fact that there are two different ones. There are different graphics. There are different logos. One statutory, so it's kind of got a legal basis. One is one's recommended. So that's another issue. And also when you get to the statutory one, which is the BBFC one, which is what you also see on, on videos and films, I think it can also confuse people into sort of thinking that this is like a film or like a video, and video games aren't. Video games have up to 100 hours of interactive content. It's a very different experience, which can be a very positive experience, unless there is material which is in the hands of the person who's young, too young to be accessing it. And I do believe there are cases where that happens and we need to look at that. I mean, as a parent, presumably, you, I mean, I know I overheard you saying before that your, your boys play with computer games and things like that. You're my sure. son and my daughter. Sorry, yeah. yes, that's right. That's, yeah. Yeah, they play with games and you're quite happy for them to do that. Do you personally feel that there might be some harmful, um, inappropriate content out there? I think, I mean, for example, my son was playing a game online recently and, uh, you know, he was cybermarked. It wasn't a great experience for him. No. He, you know, he'd saved up a lot of money. His character had saved up a lot of money, and then, you know, it was taken away from him. And I, I wasn't, you know, best pleased about it afterwards. But actually, really, the conversation he and I had, the experience for him, you know, what that brought him, how he understood it, how we were then able to go and report that, that had happened, and really look at the way that reporting procedure worked, which on this particular game was really good. Um, and as my husband said, probably better than him getting actually mocked, in the sense that he, he, he learned something, it really opened the dialogue, he's now gone back, he's playing, 
you know, in a way where he's much more aware of risk. It was a learning experience. I think it's about enabling children to sort of go through these experiences in a way that's positive for them. I'm not saying stick your kid in front of the worst kind of stuff and then, I mean, I think we've got to look at age appropriateness as well. And this is what Keith was also saying about you know, how classification for him is very age appropriate. So. Absolutely, but I think you know fundamentally, you know, this is where life's at for our kids. These are the new emerging technologies. And I think for us to take a sort of don't really understand it, so don't really want to get involved, so let them get on with the attitude, I don't think possibly is the best attitude when it comes to parenting. That sounds really arrogant. I'm actually not blaming parents because, you know, we weren't brought up with these technologies. But I think it's something we need to try and understand. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time and I hope the uh, review goes well. Thank you. Thank you very much.